The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here sitting in for the hour of Larry Pesavento. Larry, I believe, is not able to make it. Um, I, I was away last week. There's just a ton that I was wanting to do in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Haven't had a chance to do it. Let's just go straight into the TLT. Look, the TLT, which is the bonds, the, 20, the iShares 20 year Treasury bond ETF. Uh, at 118.48, up a dollar oh nine. This is going to be very interesting because there's been a rally in the bonds from the low that was made. And did I not type that in? I thought I had. Let's just type it in right now. And that was the low that was made on the uh, June the I think it was the 14th or the 17th. So there you go. Yeah, the 16th actually at 108.12. Let me just type that in so I don't have to keep doing this. 102.127. Oh, it was June. Six. 17, I think it was. Whatever it is, 17. It's close. Mid, mid June. Okay, and then it ran up um, 16 points. This is really good. And look what it does, the TNX, TNX.X, there we go. The TNX has obviously come down, is gone to uh, leg E to the downside on the Chapman Wave methodology, D, and here's your E with a little doji candle. But the MACD is still very weak. The stochastic's at 29%, still very weak. The 9 is still way under the 14, and I've been talking about this for a little while. In fact, let me do this. I haven't had a chance to do it, and I'll do it right now. I'm going to go to my triple yield chart that I show subscribers to my opening call every weekend when I do my uh, video uh, overview for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and that shows the 30-year, which is white, yield, the TYX, the TNX, which is the brown 10-year uh, yield, 10-year T-note yield. And then the 5-year T-note yield is a cyan one, FVX. And that went above... The 30-year, a couple of weeks ago, it was incredible when you see the chart. It's just like a beautiful U-shaped pattern that I talk about all the time. Went to a leg F and then a peak F at 34.72, 3.472 on the 30-year. Look at that. That's oh, Look at that cyan. That is even higher than the 30-year. And now look what we're doing. We're looking at the brown. The 10-year is below the 5-year and the 5-year is below the 30-year. So there's obviously an inversion. But... You've got yields coming down. What has that done? It said that the Philadelphia Housing Index, HGX Index, went to a lower low after going into a rectangle formation, plunges down. Uh, to, I forgot to type that in. Maybe I'll type that in right now because I have the upside at 538 way back in uh, May or June of 2021. So let's just put that in right here. We're going to 240, uh, 331.20. So 331.20. And look what's happened subsequent to that. Let me just make that a color that we can actually read. Uh, we've got a move to uh, the 390s. That's a 60 point. That's a 20 percent. That's a really nice move in the Philadelphia housing index. And of course, there's always bad news about housing these days. And it's pulling back today. It's down $1.69 at 396. But this is a really nice move corresponding to the decline. Look, the weekly decline in the yields, the triple yield chart. That's the 30, the 10, and the five year yields have been pulling back. And look what's happened. And would the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF? Held the 200-period exponential moving average. Did you even need the 200-period moving average? No, not since that, that uh, almost uh, year-long sideways move that was testing the breakout to the upside until it became incredible support 
and then you just it, it was gone you didn't even have to think 200 period moving average until five six months ago when it started to get close and then it tagged it and now it's moving away from it why do i make a big deal because wood very much like high-grade copper is an international um, economic benchmark so what we're looking at here is if i go to the hgx hgx right here Uh, I said HGX, I meant HG, that's copper. Uh, HGX is the Philadelphia Housing Index. So HG, at HG is the way I get the continuous contract. Made a peak D in the daily chart at the 200 period exponential moving average. How important is this orange line? This is how important it is. It goes like a sine wave over and above and then under and then it comes back down and then it gets repelled sharply and goes from the 440s down to the most recent low in the continuous contract doji candle low of 3.1315 and now it's in leg b so it's only a counter trend rally so this is a i, I get i've had questions for the past two weeks saying I exactly where are we and my contention is and it has been since november december of last year that if you consider every single sector we have been in recessions Look, copper has been in a recession since it made that high back in March at 5.062 on the continuous contract. I wonder if it's still there. 5.066. So at 5.066, and look what's happened. It's got more, more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And that's just telling you that the general economy is in a malaise. Sectors are probably uh, separated uh, in the same way. And even within that, you get stocks that are separated. So there's been a rotational sector recession. If you go to Syntas, I should have done this in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour a few minutes ago. Um, that's been in a recession since the uh, December 2021 high at 461 because it plunged all the way down to the 340s. Now it's had a good rebound. So, look, if Syntas Corporation overalls, uniforms, rentals is now showing resiliency and independent strength, it's saying it's got one of those spikes to the upside that it's done before and then failed. How the 200 period moving average of 389 can hold, CTAS is a symbol trading at $1.50 down at 395 18 How it holds the 389 level or breaks to the upside is going to be really important in August to tell us about whether the recession is rotating through a corrective period that says, some sectors, and I'm going to mention this now, even though I'm a little nervous about mentioning it, and that's the semiconductors at 223.60 up down to dollar seventy-five. Look at that big move. That's been in a double top from November 318 to 318 in January after pulling back um, uh, to the uh, three uh, to the 280s. Double top, beautiful double top formation. And it comes, I mean, I was talking about this. How do, how do these stocks and indices know to go within pennies of the previous high? 318.82 in November. January is to 318.69. It's unbelievable. And then it drops down to 189. Trading now at 223. This rally is really important. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour of Larry Pesaventa. Back momentarily. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. I'm Basil Chapman. My show here is the Tiger Technician's Hour, 10 o'clock to 11 Eastern Time before Larry's. Larry's not able to make it today I, because I was away all last week. I did my show. I didn't have a chance to do everything that I wanted. I said I'll use this opportunity. So we're looking at the SMHs with the semiconductors. This has been a really nice rally from 189 to the high in the 230s just uh, four days ago. It's pulling back. It's holding okay. You need to see, and I, I don't want to get into the fundamentals anything i don't fully understand i'm sure that anybody actually fully understands it but i think there have been selective when you think about a year and a half of the shortage of the chips by now there has to be some kind of a catch-up in certain sectors and some people some manufacturers uh, are going to benefit will the automobiles we just don't know yet but at some point i talked about when everything comes on track, there should be a glut. But we're also talking about the new chips, I'm told, are far superior. They're always this leapfrog, the previous generation. And that means that they might be able to keep prices instead of having a commoditization where prices just drop uh, you know, lower and lower and lower. Maybe they can stabilize it. But it's really important that the semiconductors and the semiconductor weekly chart in particular – Attempts by the second, by the first to second week of August, actually, you know what? I'd say by the end of next week, there has to be at least an attempt to get to the 238, 242 level, and that'll be a test of this down channel. Remember, a channel is where you take two trend lines, where you've got outer points that can give you. Uh, the, the declining highs, and then the lower points, you like them to match. They don't have to, but the majority of the prices should match so that you can get a channel, and the channel is parallel lines. Within that, I always put in the chat wave inside track buy zone or sell zone, and in this particular instance, it went right down to it at 189.94. Um, it went right to that line in the weekly chart. The MAGD has finally, as we're speaking, it's up 0.30. The histogram has turned positive. It hasn't done that since it turned negative back in January in the 318 area. 
The stochastics improved a lot. It's at 38% in the weekly. That's not great, but 88% in the daily, that's really good. And the on-balance volume is very weak in the weekly chart. Monthly chart, you can't even talk about because we have to wait for the month to finish on Friday. But if there is a test of this resistance as we get into August, if there is a push into the 242 area on a closing basis, that says, you know what? Perhaps we are seeing some improvement in a really important area of the semiconductors. All right, enough with that. Let's go to the TLT because the TLT is the bonds. And what I was showing before is that there's a, from my eye perspective, in the huge cup formation, we've pulled back and we could be making a cup and a handle formation here from, from the 3472 level, 3.472% in the 30-year weekly chart. And that says that they could, you see the rotation that's going on? You see this rectangle, which is like a propeller shaft, um, and the pullback that is more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, holding the 200 period moving average in wood, the iShares, Global and timber, timber and Forestry ETF. If there is a move in this particular area, wood, this is global, um, into the, it's at 76 right now. If it even touches 80, that's going to be a good sign shorter term, even though it's a weekly chart. And if the even with all the bad news, I, I anticipate that the housing sector has a much more serious problem. It has not so much to do with uh, interest rates. That's just the one of the factors. But over, uh, I mean, uh, I mentioned yesterday, uh, my wife and I were in um, Manhattan last week. We've not spent time in Manhattan because whenever we go to Brooklyn to visit my family and grandkids, we're always with them, and we're only going very briefly into Manhattan. This is the first time we actually took time. I wanted to do that because forever I've always followed Manhattan for skyscrapers, spoke about the skyscraper theory that I thought was mine, but it wasn't. The Empire State Building was built in uh, – and the papers were passed. I did a whole webinar once on Goldman Sachs and, and Empire State Building and everything. Papers were passed summer of uh, 1929. Um, the top – at 386 was made in the Dow, the long weekend, September, they're going to September the 3rd. Um, the Empire State Building was built in the shortest time period you can imagine with, with the Depression. They didn't know it was a Depression, but certainly with the incredible downturn that occurred. These workers worked. They did not want to lose their jobs. That was one of the most well-built buildings ever. And it was opened in what the shortest period of time in 18 months, 1932, something like that, 1931. Um, and uh, so I, I, I wanted to be there. And I wanted to be there because of those tall, skinny skyscrapers. I just wanted to see what's going on. I wanted to get a, a sense of, of it. I wanted to get a sense of, of growth. I wanted to get a sense of the general public that I could feel when walking around Central Park, etc. It was really important. I got a tremendous amount. I don't want to talk about it now, other than to say that yields are important, but the pricing of homes and real estate almost throughout the country, I'm even hearing of little places um, <laughs> away from major cities that are seeing huge rental increases. Something there is going to change. How it changes is always <laughs> recessions kind of take care of that. But at the same time, I've been speaking about this. Uh, look, the global timber and forestry ETF has been basically in a recession since over a year ago, April of, uh, of last year. You're looking at... Um, the builders, uh, the Philadelphia housing index, basically it's been double topping. It's been a recession. So all you're waiting now is for the official economic st stats to say, oh, oh, we're in a recession. And usually in my experience over the decades and decades is that as soon as economists say recession is we're in a recession, that's when you start to make really serious lows in the market and things start to turn around. So maybe maybe we're close. But in the meantime, the TLT, look at this one-to-one -one expansion to downside from 179 uh, March of 2020, two years ago, over two years ago, in the iShares 20 Treasury Bond Fund, coming all the way down the pattern I call the dreaded H, two dreaded Hs, breaks down and it went all the way to the 10212 uh, level in June. And now we're bouncing some. And it's just bouncing some. So all of this says to me that 
the rotation has to be officially recognized because just about every single, look at this RTH. RTH is the retail sector without Amazon. XRT is the retail sector with Amazon. They look the same, big, big pullbacks, major. They're in recession. There's no question about it. You don't have to, well, you need an official title? Nah, it's there. So let me, let me look at this. I wanted to show you the dollar. Look, the dollar is, makes a high. Did I not type that in? No, I should have. Makes a high at 109.29 on the 14th. So far, so far, this is pretty darn good action, isn't it? I'll be back in a minute. Basil Chapman, well, a few minutes. Basil Chapman dials down 156. We'll be right back to continue. We're looking at all the different currencies. I mean, we're looking at the commodities as well when we return. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour that Larry does. Larry's uh, trade what you see. Oh, he couldn't make it today. And I, I, I'm, in, I'm sitting in because uh, I, there's a lot that I wanted that people had asked me about. And I didn't get to in my Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock to 11. Don't forget my newsletter is called The Opening Call. That comes out every morning at about 8.30, before 8.30. Um, so what we're looking at at this particular point is really important because, uh, let me just get out of this. I want you to do, do a couple of things at the same time. Because crude or oh, I've got a caller. Don't forget the caller. Wow, I almost forgot about the caller. Thank you very much for reminding me, Al. Let's go to Phil in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Phil, how are you? Fantastic, Basil. How about yourself? I'm well, thank you. Um, you'd like to look at? Wise key, W-K-E-Y. 
So why is Key International Holdings? I'm not sure what they do. What do they do? Well, they do some cybersecurity. They do some IoT. Um, got a couple contracts with the French military, secure their drones. They're, do you uh, have they're a- doing some onshoring with the semiconductors as well. They're out of Switzerland, but I'm trading the ABR here. Just started oh, a position and okay. uh, wanted to see what it looks like on the chart. So what, what, uh, do you have any position or is just a question about it? Yeah, I just, I just started. I, I bought a startup position today. Just wanted to see what you would look at as far as levels, upside and downside. So Anything just joking. off the page at you. Yeah, what jumps out of the page at me is that the monthly chart has had big moves, single move, monthly moves up into the 40s, and the same bar then crashes to the downside and makes even lower lows. That That's its modus operandi. So I don't know what the overseas chart looks like. It must be f- similar to this, but maybe without quite the volatility, but the, the pattern must be close. At 2.37, you know, I I have to tell you, I've looked at the I've looked at Hack, which is the cybersecurity ETF for my subscribers for so long. Um, I cannot understand. It's beyond me why the cyber area has been so weak. Talk about recession! It's been in recession since uh, a year ago, almost a year ago. It just makes lower lows and lower highs. Even today is down sharply, 2.7% down to dollar thirty at 46. And if I look at cyber, if I look at all these different stocks, why on earth? Man, this is, I mean, everybody needs cyber security, and yet they're not participating. Something's going on. Maybe it's because some of the networks, some of the, maybe the Comcast, etc. maybe they have such a good security system. I don't know what it is, but I'm shocked. Cyber Arc and Israeli Network Security Software Company Crowd. So that, those, those are all in the same area. Uh, went to the 200 period moving average and now it's f- pulling back sharply. It was once at 298. It plunged down to the 130s. I mean, that's a, these are huge moves. So let's go back to your question. And the question is W K E Y. And I can just say to you that. The sideways pattern in an arch formation says that unless visually, just on a chart basis, because the MACD rallied, price didn't rally. Stochastic rallied, price tried to rally, but then it failed. On balance volume, tried to rally, failed. The 9 is still way under the 14. I just think that at 237, I tell you what I would prefer to do, since you've just got a little starter position. I would, I'd have a little patience. This one is going to need patience because this is a rectangle sideways move. But whoa, I wouldn't mind going from 230, uh, 225, the low that was made on the 1st of July, to the high that was made on the 12th of July of 267. That's like 21 to 27. I mean, that's, um, that's really good in percentage terms. But then on the way down, it's gone from the 260s to 230s. And that, on a percentage basis, even today, it sounds like two cents. What's the big deal? Well, it's 80, 0.84%, almost 1%. So this is what I would do. I would immediately draw in, you talked about a technical picture, and the technical picture says it went to a peak B. That hasn't failed yet because it hasn't taken out the low. But I have a time price match, and that time price match says from the left side, I'm going to go to the doji candle. Now I'm going to go to the second. I'm going to be conservative. I'm going to make it longer than I would normally do. I'm going to go to the right side and put that in. And I'm going to say there's a chance that by the 3rd of August, if 230 support is taken out, it's going to get really close or maybe even test the 225 low that was made on the 1st. How that holds is going to be important. That's where I would be looking to say, hey, you've got a habit now in the rectangle formation of going sideways and then making slightly lower lows. But if that holds and you don't break the 225 area, but you hold 227 and then move to 231, that might be where I would start maybe another little tiny position. Or if it was me, it would be my first attempt. But look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart has the black 14 period moving average. 
it, it, it's barely been able to touch that since it broke down back in October of 2021. And the pink one, it's hit it so many times it has not even cr closed once above it in all that time. Now it's flattening out. This is the first time that you might get it. So this is the time where you could start to see WKEY, uh, Wise Key International Holdings, at least have a rebound. The big move, I just don't see that right now. So, and I'm saying that based on, I'm, I'm basing it on both the cyber work that I looked at, all the different securities, as well as the hack, which is the, and I think bug is another one, B-U-G. Uh, I realize they're completely different price levels. This is at 25 and it's failing. It's global X cybersecurity. So all I can say is this is a, a real tough one for me because it's stuck in a range, and I think it's going to stay in this range. Look, it could have tried today. It attempted. It went to 255, and here it is at 237. So you need to see very quickly that it gets to the 245 area and holds there on a closing basis. And then it says, aha, maybe now I can move towards the top. Because if it goes below today's 237 low, it goes to 235 there's a real good chance it's going to test the left side low. I'd be real careful of this. I wouldn't put much money up on it. I'd rather wait and pay a little bit more to see it making higher highs and higher lows rather than just going sideways. I don't know if I'm helping you, but that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, that's, that's a lot of help. That's valuable information, Basil. I appreciate it. I appreciate you calling, Phil, and good luck with this. I'm going to put it down. And I'm going to make a note just to keep following it because you never know with these very low price stocks in an area that could very quickly become a popular area, but the, the cyber has not yet. Thank you for calling. I appreciate that. Have a great week, Basil. I'll speak with you soon. I hope so. Thank you very much. So, folks, let's just go back to DXY. So the dollar... We've been long since 2018 at 90.07 via, via the UUP. Uh, ran, ran, we took one little profit at 96, saw it go all the way to the high of 102.99 back in 2020, and then it plummeted down to 89.21. Our stop on the UUP held, and we've just, uh, two weeks ago, we took a tad off in the 108 area. And I, I think the, the dollar is, to me, still uh, really important it is pulling back. It has gone to a sell signal in the daily, not yet a sell mode. There's a trend line that we're talking about. It's got the pattern that I've spoken about much earlier in my show, actually. Question about the chat wave inverted falling axe formation, and then it went higher. It had that uh, back. I'll, maybe I'll talk about that when we return. So we've got the Dow down 207, S&P's down 45. Bowser Chapman sitting you for the hour of Larry Pesavento. Be back in a moment. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I brought you back, Dow's down 184, S&P's down 43, Basil Chapman, and I had a question about, Basil, what's your favorite long in the food sector? I, I've had a tough time. GIS is the one that I would normally look at and say, let's see where it's going to go. Um, that's GIS is the general foods, GIS. Uh, it's holding well. It's up near, almost near the highs. The highs up in the 70s, and there it is. It's in a 76 area, and it's at 73. I would say this is the one that's holding best, and because of it, that would be the one that I'd look at. But I, to, to, I, I'm not sure I'd actually put my money there. Um, so I'm not going to be very helpful to you. But I, I think this is one of the better ones. I think General Mills, the the panoply of of of, of w what they sell. I think has a better chance of seeing a price increase if it has to do that, uh, being uh, holding, we'll see. Next question about the GLD, uh, that's gold. Uh, if you go along the GLD, it says, uh, PG says, uh, no, someone else says to PG. If you venture back into gold calls, uh, you, you, uh, I'll join your misery loves company. So look, the GLD and the GDX are not participating very well. The GDX, the gold miners, keeps making lower lows and lower highs. To me, my eye says it's getting real close to some kind of a balance. But if it couldn't use the decline in the dollar uh, to, to balance, it just says this is not yet the area that that is showing strength. Uh, and talk about a recession. It's been a recession. The gold miners since the 33 level back in June, this has plummeted down to the 24s. Now, wait a minute. Look at the EUR USD. So the euro dollar currency pair I spoke about this. I spoke about this huge arch formation and where I chose the plumb line to talk about left side, right side price time match. It went within two weeks of it, going from the March 2020 low of 1.06 uh, to this to this failure pattern. And that failure pattern says getting back to 104 is going to be really tough. I'll be back. Oh, we've got a caller coming in and we've got a caller. We've got Mike at Ormond Beach. Mike, how are you? Pretty good, Basil. First of all, thank you for all the work you do at TFNN. You're always there to fill in for somebody that can't make it. I really appreciate all the time you put in. Well, thank uh, you very much. And and also, I, I caught part of what you were saying about the dollar. And I'm looking at the dollar and uh, uh, crude oil because I've been trading in and out of some of these oil stocks. Um so were you implying that the dollar could be at a short-term bottom and getting ready to bounce? Because I'm looking at a lot of these oil stocks like Exxon, and uh, it went up to the 50 SMA, and that acted as resistance, and, and it looks like it's coming back down. So is so, there a possibility that the so dollar will be rising? Th let me be as clear as I can, because... Um, I know this is an area that uh, if it's if you're a little bit fuzzy, interpretations could be anything. What I am saying is, first of all, I want to treat VIXI, the volatility index, Goldie, gold, Dolly, the dollar, uh, crudy, the crude oil, 
and Bondi bonds as separate vehicles, even though sometimes they work together or sometimes they exact counterpoints like the dollar and gold has always been traditionally. Right. I want to think of them separately. When I think of them separately, I'm able to put in positions for my subscribers that allow me to kind of free think to say, hey, maybe we can do something that is against what normally you'd be thinking. So in the crude oil, if you look at the rectangle formation in the weekly chart with the double top, I'm talking about the continuous contract, maybe the price has changed. I'm talking about the high in the week of 11th of March at 121.46. I don't know if that's the same price, but the, everything else is the same. And then it got retested uh, back in uh, June, was it? No, where was that? Yeah, it was. June, the week of the 17th, uh, it got tested within a, a few points. Uh, the technicals were way weaker, and yet when it's pulled back, the rectangle formation in the weekly chart is held. And that just says real clearly that 87, the 200 period exponential moving average, is going to be really important going into August in crude oil. Because if there's a, a close below that level, that means you've taken out uh, a lot of key left side support levels. And it says that that should be an opportunity for, say, the airlines or the rails or, or the truckers to move higher. So that, that impacts the um, transportation index. At this particular point, crude oil is just stuck in the lower range, and now it's starting to show signs of making lower highs and lower lows. That's different altogether to natural gas, which I was talking about yesterday, which screamed almost to the left side high of June. So Natural gas is now a completely different chart formation, really positive one, as opposed to crude oil. So I, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to separate everything out. So right. in that regard, I'm saying crude oil is still remaining kind of weak at this particular point, even with all the conflagration, everything that's going on internationally. Look at the, the trend line in the uh, dollar, and it's holding it right now. It seems to me that the dollar is using up time more than price. If you look at the weekly chart, so far the technicals are still very strong. If you look at the monthly chart, I'm still of the opinion that this is leg C and that the dollar, even if there is a couple of months of, of weakness, will go to a leg D, a higher high at some point. So, And that I treating the dollar as the currency of recognition. Uh, it's the United States economy which so far is still one of the better economies in the world. And this is the respect that you see via the icon of the dollar. So there are a lot of psychological as well as physical and technical aspects to the dollar that I consider to be really important. The fact that it's used time and just gone from 109 to 106 in two and a half weeks or one and a half weeks uh, as a correction is so far saying that's good. The green 19 period moving average is really close to slipping under the 14 period moving average. That's holding the holding the dollar up at this particular point. But if I use the inversion, I know you don't mind if I do this just to be able to give you a better picture. The euro is struggling and the monthly chart of the euro is making the cup to the arch to the cup and now a huge arch formation with the lower left mm -hmm. side low. And the weak need, I don't see the strength in the euro, and that's the reason why the dollar is still holding well. So treat it separately. Dollar, icon, that's where money is going. Big, big money is going to the dollar. The uh, gold, fear icon, a lot of the fear factor is kind of filtering out of the market at this particular point. Therefore, the dollar is starting to weaken. The VIX index, which is the volatility, is pulling back, but it's still within a trading band. And that says that's the reason why we get days like yesterday and today where there's a rally attempt and then all of a sudden it goes to lower lows. So at this particular point, I'm saying that if the VIX index has already done that, it's gone over 25 over the 200 period moving average. I'm watching it because by the end of the day, especially I wish today was Fed day instead of tomorrow because now we've still got 24 hours in which to see a lot of choppiness in the market. Um, but at this particular point, if the VIX index actually closes Wednesday, even, uh, Wednesday at 4 o'clock, closes towards the 25.80, 26.20 area, that's over a point higher than where we are right now, and that's going to suggest that we've got a lot of weakness to come going into Thursday and Friday. But if there is a pullback and starts to trade back at 24.20 or in the 23s, that's going to help the general market. 
Uh, you want to hold on? Oh. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. I'll be back with Mike and uh, uh, Mike in Ormond Beach, Florida. We're down 192 in the Dow, down 44. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tower of Elizabeth. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, so we are back and we are looking at, let me just get back to this. So I'm looking at all these diverse areas and this is really a, a typical of what's going on. I had a question come uh, come in from my, uh, from the, so, uh, from my Tiger, to, from the Tiger YouTube about Louisiana Pacific. And here it is. And this is what I'm talking about, that you've got to look at each sector separately. This is at a beautiful run from 50 to 63, it's trading at 60 right now. But the general consensus, as the visuals say, it's making lower lows and lower highs. So this is a great trading range. But everywhere we look at, you've got, I don't see the follow through. In other words, even though we are long in different areas for my subscribers from opening call, um, mostly what we're trying to do and what I've been doing, going through here with Mike and Ormond Beach is that it's very selective, and I've been very selective. We've raised a huge cash position, but we're very selective in our long position. And I've got tight stops. I'm not prepared to mess around. You're out, you're out. And if you get back in, it's got to work. So even Louisiana Pacific, which is holding really nicely now, says it's starting to bump into resistance in the, in the low 60s. How it handles, handles it and gets to the 65 is going to be very important. So, uh, Mike, uh, kind of in, in answer to your question, and just your overall overview, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at everything separately. If you look at the crude oil, 
Uh, you know, crude oil has been has pulled back sharply, but it's still quite high, but it has pulled back sharply. And if I go through each one of these different commodities, that's the story. Um, and when I went through the euro, I was saying that the euro is pulling back, the dollar is holding well. And it's, it's almost the same thing. So I'm looking at it, and I'm just going to make it real simple. If at any point in the next two, three days, the volatility index trading at 25.26 actually starts to trade, not just close, but trade in the 23s, we can get a really nice counter trend rally. If it holds in the 2580 to 26 or higher area, that's going to put uh, downside pressure. We might we might see that into tomorrow after the Fed talks, and then we'll see what happens. But after the Fed speaks, it's going to be really important that there is some kind of a rally. Hope that helps you. Thanks for being here. Uh, folks, Basil Chapman signing off, and I'm sitting here for the hour on Larry Pazemba, Bento's hour check out all the reports by Daily Newsletter. I'll be back. Wonderful rest of the day. Great program coming up.